Traditionally, the Bahamas has been significantly impacted by hurricanes, uh, as well as storm surges. We're hoping for our survival. Today, we're sitting down with Backswin, the Bahamas Aviation, Climate, and Severe Weather Network. We're here to understand how this organization is empowering the country to adapt to the impacts of climate change with the most cutting edge technologies. Let's go. Hi, Lerone. Thanks so much for having us here today for Climacon 2023. So excited to be talking to you here in beautiful Bahamas. Hi, Kelly. Uh, pleasure to have you here in the Bahamas. To kick things off, can you tell me a little bit about why Backswan was created, how long it's been around, and more about your role with them? Um, I serve as the president and CEO of Backswan. Uh, Backswan stands for Bahamas Aviation Climate and Surveil Weather Network. The vision for Backswan extends back about uh, seven years, uh, stemming out of certain weather conditions that uh, were present that significantly impacted our founder. Uh, we see ourselves as a media company, uh, but with our uh, thrust being in being able to improve the way in which weather is seen within the Bahamas. Uh, the Bahamas is a significantly large archipelago of islands, and uh, as part of that, we want to ensure that persons get information relative to weather conditions on a timely basis to ensure that uh, their safety is preserved. What would you say right now are the most challenging weather and climate threats for the Bahamas that perhaps influence the creation of Baxwan? So traditionally, the Bahamas has been significantly impacted by uh, hurricanes uh, as well as storm surges. Uh, but in the most recent past, we are seeing the impact of global warming uh, with uh, increasing sea levels. So you've mentioned a couple of different types of weather and climate impacts. How did these affect you know, the, the country's infrastructure, economy, and different industries? Well, these have uh, had significant impacts um, to the Bahamas, uh, our economy, our infrastructure. Um, so as these hurricanes have come through, and we've had quite a bit over the last 10 to 15 years, uh, and the severity of which have been co constantly increasing, uh, in many instances, we've had to almost start from scratch from some of, for some of our islands. Uh, significant capital uh, infrastructure, both um, from the government perspective as well as from the private side. Um, uproot of uh, persons having to move from one island to the next. And in some instances, going years before being able to uh, go back to their place of, of residence. Uh, but even beyond that, there is the psychological toll of having to go through these uh, significant weather events. What would you say that Baxwan's thinking is around global early warning systems then? Absolutely not only physical, but psychological impacts, as you mentioned. What is the approach when we're thinking about these, implementing these new systems? So one of the, the challenges I think we've faced in the Bahamas is um, historically, um, as these storms have approached, uh, the warnings that have gone out have been through either television or radio and um, due to the impact in previous years uh, persons generally took the position of what we call riding out the storm uh, but as the severity of them of these have occurred uh, we are realizing now that we cannot take the same actions that we've taken in the past and um, what we intend to do with Baxwin is to provide a more real-time uh, 3D hyperlocal information to uh, those residents that would be impacted. And as I indicated, uh, we operate in an in a archipelago. And so conditions that may affect the southeastern islands mm -hmm. may be different from that from the northern islands. And so what we want to be able to do is to provide them um, three, with 3D animation, real time, of the impact of those weather conditions that will be uh, that they will in fact be facing. Uh, we anticipate that being able to see it um, and what is the expectation for them in their particular place of habitation that they will be um, more prone uh, to take those necessary actions ahead of the storm. Mm. And I would imagine that it's not just technology that you have in-house or have developed on your own, but it's also working with technology partners like Tomorrow.io. Can you talk a little bit about how you are working with a variety of you know, external partners and, and maybe how you even chose, chose those ones? Sure. So Baxwin is a private entity. And um, 
what we have done is we have kind of assembled uh, a, a great team and we're cont continuing to expand on that team. Uh, we have uh, international partners, uh, the National Center for Atmospheric Research. Um, have, we've executed an agreement, an arrangement with them for them to be our strategic advisors. Uh, Tomorrow.io, we've been working with them from almost the initiation of our, uh, of our organization. So uh, what we're looking to do is to utilize uh, is existing equipment and infrastructure that we have here in the Bahamas, but to complement that with the technological advances that we have from companies like Tomorrow.io. So now we'll have not, not just uh, equipment on the ground, but also utilizing um, the, and interfacing uh, with the uh, weather satellites that Tomorrow.io has launched and will be launching to increase its constellation. Mm -hmm. So we anticipate that with these equipment talking to each other, along with the expertise of our strategic partners, that we'll be in a much better position to provide the necessary information to our, to our populace in order for them to be safe as well as to protect their uh, environment. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. And needless to say, Baxwan is private, as you mentioned, working with public entities. You obviously see the value in, in the private sector. If you had to kind of summarize, you know, what role do you see the private sector playing in advancing things like meteorology, for example? Well, in a, in a growing environment such as the Bahamas, um, it is difficult. And in fact, I would say um, it is unlikely that you'll be in a position where the government would be able to fund a lot of these initiatives. Uh, one of the positive things that we have seen with our, with our government is that um, there's a pursuit for what we call uh, public-private uh, relationships. And um, in those instances, the private sector is encouraged to bring forth the uh, capital resources, the funding, uh, the innovation, and um, to work along with government to ensure that at the end of the day, uh, what we bring to the, to, to the fore is something that is productive and something that can actually be income producing for the private companies, but as well be able to improve the lot of the Bohemian populace. And speaking to the last part of that, improving lives for the Bohemian popula populace, how are you ensuring that you apply these climate adaptation approaches and systems to everyone and making sure that it reaches everyone, even the marginalized? Um, what is Baxon's role in that? Yeah, and uh, great question. And that is something that in terms of the founding of the company is something that we've actually um, identified as being one of the main thrusts for our operation. Uh, traditionally, uh, weather forecasting has been sort of generalized within the Bahamas, but with the implementation of the technologies that we are bringing forward, as well as that of our strategic partners, as I've indicated, uh, the intent is to ensure that we're able to provide specific um, weather expectations um, at ground level for each and every location or major location within within the Bahamas. Um, so that will be as far in the southeast of the Bahamas as well as to the north. Uh, so each person or each community mm -hmm. is able to obtain the information that identifies what those weather conditions will be that will affect them specifically. Mm -hmm. That's great and I'd, I'd imagine that is a challenge still though, the diversity and, and the fact that it is a chain of islands. What other obstacles are there that you face in implementing early warning systems or just thinking about climate adaptation for the Bahamas generally, if you had to say, you know, the top challenges or obstacles right now? Yeah. Well, I would say that uh, technology um, is a benefit, but in some instances it is an obstacle in a country of our, of our type, um, access to uh, information sometimes um, is delayed and so we would need to work with some of our other uh, private entities and some of our uh, state-owned entities to ensure that the information flow whether it be through websites, social media, uh, text messaging, uh, or voice communication that we have a way to ensure that all persons are able to receive the same level of information at the same time so that they can be more proactive in their decision making. Mm -hmm. Building on that then, what would you say your hopes for the Bahamas overall are in the face of climate change? It sounds like obviously protecting each individual at the hyperlocal level. More broadly, what do you envision? What do you hope? Well, I guess to be, more, to be as direct as possible, uh, we're hoping for our survival. 
Um, the Bahamas is an extremely low-lying um, location, and as um, global warming continues, or if it was to continue, there is the significant likelihood that we will not be around uh, in the next several decades. So our intent really is to ensure our outright survival. <laughs> uh, but we're very confident that with the actions that we're taking, as well as our global partners, uh, the thrust for improving uh, uh, the conditions of climate uh, globally, that um, we'll be around in the next 20, 30 years. <laughs> it's a good goal. Can you talk a bit more about the communication channels you use to get the message out around you know, upcoming early warnings or just weather forecasting overall? So one of the beauties of our organization is that uh, we're affiliated with a uh, newspaper uh, entity, uh, but not only that, but also multiple uh, radio stations. Um, so we will operate as a pass-through uh, to provide the weather data and information to those entities who in turn will ensure that, that it goes, goes out to the public. Uh, one of the other things that we're doing is working, uh, the intent is for us to work with uh, NEMA, which is the National Emergency Management Agency, uh, state-owned and state-run enterprise. Uh, so we're looking to actually be able to expand on our premises um, to house their operations um, and to kind of bring them up from a technology standpoint as well. Uh, where they'll be able to track uh, weather conditions in real time and be able to provide that information out through the um, state-run uh, uh, operations as well. Great. That makes a lot of sense. How would you say that you then measure the success of all of this, both global early warning systems, climate adaptation for BACSWAN? What are the you know, KPIs, so to speak? What are you looking at to make sure that you're, you're doing this right? Well, I think it's really simple. Um, we want to do is to see a heightened awareness uh, from the public uh, where weather becomes a more important factor in their lives. Um, we have uh, beautiful uh, oceans, uh, we have a wonderful uh, environment, and we would want to see persons really uh, utilizing the weather information that we're providing to make certain decisions in terms of how they commute, uh, what they do in the course of the day, and ensuring that when there are significant weather events that the proactive um, action is taken to ensure their safety. Right, yeah, we always say at tomorrow.io just the idea that you don't have to just react to weather. It's changing how you're even thinking about it, almost change management to, to an extent. So it's great to hear you share that, yeah, as well. On that topic of tomorrow.io, what was it that instilled confidence in you that tomorrow.io was the right weather partner, weather and climate partner for, for Backswan and Bahamas? No, we had the pleasure of um, engaging with Tomorrow.io uh, for quite a while as we were brainstorming uh, the initiatives of, of Baxwin. So the, one of the, the key features of the platform that we really like is the fact that it is highly adaptable. Uh, it can be used by persons from multiple industries. And in fact, um, if you access it and the industry that you're in is not there, uh, it, it is highly configurable, so it can be adjusted um, to meet those particular particular demands. Um, I'm not a meteorologist, um, however, being able to go into the application uh, it is fairly easy um, to utilize. And so I think that's one of the major uh, positives that has assisted us in terms of making the decision to move with Tomorrow.io. I think one of the important things was getting to work uh, with those, uh, with the leadership of Tomorrow.io and uh, the more we conversed, the more we realized that there was um, a, a, a shared ideology, um, a thirst for knowledge, also a thirst for improving on technology and moving something that has been around from the dawn of, dawn of time in terms of weather, but moving it up in terms of the, 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 the thrust of it, right, uh, the importance of it how it affects the daily lives, even to persons who don't even think of it. Think of it. Mm -hmm. And so we want to be in a, when we recognize that there was such uh, a level of symbiosis uh, between us and Tomorrow.io, it was an easy decision to make. Yeah. And um, obviously the, the improvement in technology. So something as significant as being able to uh, put uh, weather satellites into lower orbit, um, it kind of blows your mind, right? 
and the improvements that we anticipate that will come from that. Uh, so it is definitely a pleasure. Uh, we're looking forward to a long and continued uh, partnership with Tomorrow.io. Couldn't have said it better myself. Absolutely, likewise. Thank you so much for having us here today. And um, please let us know if there's anything else we can do to support you. Thanks so much. Fantastic. Thank you.